I am just following up on a case that I had read about a few years ago and it popped into my head the other day and I got a little bit of information about it and I will just um, refresh people's memories or just talk about the case in case you're not aware of this case at all. This happened in Magnolia, Arkansas on May 14th, 2017. It was a prosecutor, I believe, in Arkansas that said this was one of the worst child abuse cases in his 30 years of his practice. Both Erica Shyrock, I think that's how you pronounce her name, she was 19 years old at the time, and her boyfriend and child's father, Charles Elliott, was 18 at the time. They did plead guilty to this crime, and they would receive a $15,000 bond each, and they could not have contact with anyone under 12, which was part of the agreement. However, I believe that they did remain in jail until their court date. It was likely that they could probably get up to five years in prison for the gross negligence of their daughter. The baby girl was just 15 days old and she was premature when she was born and weighed just four pounds. Now on that horrific night, her parents said that they had the baby girl in the bedroom with them and during the night they did hear her crying. They figured she was hungry, but when they got up to give her some assistance, they did realize that she was covered in blood. Erica and her daughter's father, Charles, they had been asleep, again, in the same room as this baby. This is what they were saying. And again, the baby at this time was only five pounds. So that means the two weeks that she was out of the hospital, she might have gained just a pound. The little girl had been bitten over a hundred times by rats. And the rat bites were so severe, they were scattered throughout her little body. And one of the bite marks had actually caused a gash that was so deep and severe that you could see the baby girl's skull. This baby was definitely suffering that night. She had to be crying in sheer agony. But the couple who were in the same room, what they were saying, didn't hear a thing until they heard her screaming. Elliot said that he had seen bloody footprints from the rats when he had woken up. Throughout the house, there were bloody footprints. They didn't want to take the baby to the hospital at first because they were afraid that the baby girl would be taken away from them. But they did finally take her to receive medical attention. When the police got there, they did search the property and they found more blood in the bassinet, rodent, rodent footprints in the living room and throughout the home. Soaked in blood was a stained baby blanket. In a wooden cabinet, they noticed rodent droppings as the police looked throughout the residence. Doctors told the detectives that the rats had to be feeding on this baby for hours for there to be such damage that was done to this infant. Either the parents were not there or they were incapacitated not to have responded to this baby's cries. It was also stated that there was a roommate that shared the residence with them, but there was no mention, at least that I could find, if he or she was there while the baby was screaming and did she even hear the baby screaming. Again, I'm sure this child had to be in hellish anguish to have rats pretty much gnawing at her in throughout hours. It was hours. That's what the police reports were saying. The parents knew that they did have a terrible rat problem, but they didn't do anything about it. 
the mother admitted that she did smoke marijuana, used a street drug called K2, and she did have methamphetamines and Tylenol mixed with codeine around this time. The father admitted to marijuana, crystal meth, and a synthetic marijuana. So basically, they were they were there in the home with the baby, but they were so high and incapacitated that they didn't hear this little girl suffering just feet away until it was it was too late. This baby did live, which I'm happy to say because in a lot of my stories these babies they don't make it, but thank goodness this baby did live. The baby did receive facial reconstruction surgery and that large wound that was on her head they had to pretty much reconstruct that she did suffer severe skin destruction and but again she lived she lived and as i researched this story i did come across a lot of horror stories of other children even a lot older than this 15 day old little girl that had been pretty much eaten alive by rodents. So again, I'm so happy that this baby girl did live. The couple actually have a total of three children. In another article, they said they had four children between the two of them, but it did state that Charles did have two children that were taken away from the state so whatever children that this couple had with each other or with other people were basically wards of the state now the owner of the home who is a family friend who was renting the residence to them he actually said quote yes these are young kids and I don't condone what happened to that baby in any form and fashion I saw it I had to deal with it and this this morning but the little girl just had lost her brother not 24 hours before that unquote and I'm thinking when he meant by lost he meant maybe to the state maybe the state had came and collected this child don't think he meant that this uh, baby boy had passed away I think this is one of the children um, that was taken away however I don't know if it was one from the both of them or just one of Charles's kids. I'm not sure, but that baby was taken away just 24 hours before this baby girl was attacked by rats. Both Erica and Charles had rough childhoods. This is one of the arguments that was said while they were in court. They both had to deal with physical abuse and sexual abuse. And now they are young adults. They are still young. They were teenagers when this happened. And here we are, about four or five years later. They're, they're still young. They're still young. So they had to deal with some bad stuff when they were in their childhood. And now they are young adults, and now they're still dealing with mental health issues and substance abuse. The couple had started to serve their sentence with a 293-day credit. Now, remember I said that they never got out of jail and they had been in jail for 293 days before they actually got in front of a judge. Each one, Erica and Charles, say that in the past they have been in or out of foster cares I'm not sure but um, their children are currently in foster care or pretty much not within their custody is what I'm trying to say so you know they pretty much I guess had that mentality of they wanted to keep this baby with them because I heard that you know, childcare sometimes isn't the best, but we see that this baby, due to this rat problem and this young couple's drug abuse, that this wasn't going to be a good decision anyway. And yes, the baby was ultimately taken away from this couple, and she was adopted by a non-family member. So that is 
you know, a good thing. The house on 214 South Cordelia Street was demolished. It was burned down. So that won't be up anymore. Now, remember I said the couple did start their sentence when they got out of court for their 293 day credit. They were eligible for parole in 304 days. So that was like 30 days. I think they served less than a month after they were sentenced. I actually did a little update. I went on both their Facebook pages. I don't know if they're together. They may be together. The couple, I'm not sure. I don't know if they had any more kids. I do see children um, in some of the more recent photographs, but it may be their past children. I'm, I'm really not sure. But um, Erica, they had a title, Erica Finds Herself in More Legal Trouble. She was 21 years old, and it seemed that she assaulted a family member. And it was dispatched to a home near Walkerville, and the family member or the person that she had stabbed was Kenny Wadden or Widden, I think you pronounce his name. I'm not sure, but he was a family member. And they do say that, um, the wounds were superficial. Um, they were, they were minor at best. Um, Erica would be taken into custody at Columbia County Justice and Detention Facility. And again, Widden had the minor injury to his hand. The article mainly spoke about the other adults that were in the home and they were arrested prior, not even the day that this domestic assault had occurred. And they spoke about how people in the household had expired tags, minor offenses, um, things maybe like knives and stuff. They mainly discussed the rat bite case. So they really wasn't talking about anything else. I did uh, Google her right here on YouTube and it seemed like she'd started two different channels at one time. And I mean, she's, she's a young girl. I mean, I'm not like sticking up for her. It's awful what happened. And we know every day that children are taken away from, you know, their, their parents. Um, they are young. Hopefully they, they are receiving counseling either together or separately. Hopefully Erica is receiving some type of drug abuse counseling. Sometimes it is mandated during your sentence, but they don't really follow through with it. So hopefully on her own, she will. You know, sometimes it, it's horrible. And sometimes, you know, you do have a slight soft spot for younger people it wasn't malicious. I don't know what happened with the other children, but in this instance, it wasn't malicious. They just were not caring properly for this child. And it's very awful. It's very awful. But normally all my stories end in the death of a child. So I'm just glad that this little girl is living with people now and that's pretty much it. So this was just an update that was just on my mind.